Ladies and gentlemen, let's bring him into the comment video. We're going to be going through the daily happenings in the tech and gaming industry. There have been a couple of interesting developments, specifically related to AMD's Polaris architecture and NVIDIA's Pascal lineup of GPUs, where supposedly some specifications have emerged regarding Pascal, although I'm a little dubious about them, we'll go into them anyway. So first things first, AMD's Polaris architecture. So, during AMD's Caspian event, we were all rather eager to see some demos of the hardware, and we got one, admittedly, not quite as much as we'd hoped for. Instead, we saw Hitman 2016 running at 1440p, with all of the settings at the highest, and the game managed to maintain a constant 60fps throughout. This was on a Polaris 10 engineering sample GPU. Unfortunately, that doesn't necessarily give us much of an indication of performance, and I'll tell you why, because that's about give or take what the Fury X can do, but because the game was being capped at that frame rate, for all we know, it could have been running at 6,000 frames per second unkept. Of course, that's completely and utterly ridiculous, but still, you get the idea. We don't really know what would have happened if the if the brake had been fully removed and, you know, the, the GPU could do whatever it wanted to. So, what we have, however, seen is some actual images of the card. Unfortunately, we don't see the actual production silicon, but what we can see is the, um, the GPU sitting in a small form factor case running Hitman, and we can also see the back of the card. The rear of the card isn't particularly exciting. It's got the the usual free display ports, but these are the 1.3 standard. Um, one HDMI 2.0 and a DVI dual link, so five connections total. And the PCB is reported to be absolutely minuscule. Those present have reported it to be about the same size as the Fury Nano. Now, the Polaris 11 is potentially more interesting in a way with its achievement because it is the lower end chip which I've got to say is a bit confusing because when you first hear Polaris 11 you would think uh, well 11 is higher than 10 so that's the better chip right or the more powerful chip that doesn't nope that's not happening Polaris 11 in this case is very much aimed at mobile gaming solutions and what's rather astounding is Aplaris 11 can run 4K VR content passively. This with no fans at all, just the, you know, the normal heatsink and stuff. Now, obviously, that's not necessarily games. That would be video content and stuff. But still, it still requires a lot of processing power to be able to run that on chip. It's really darn impressive. Now... I have done all of this as an article as well. The main reason is because there's a lot of links and stuff that I'm talking about. So you can check those out. You can check out the link in the video's description. But the main mystery we've got right now is how AMD's GPUs are going to be, I guess you could say, sitting in the marketplace. We know and this is going over some slightly old ground, but we know that there are going to be two Polaris cards released in 2016. This has been mentioned time and time again by AMD. And we also know from the um, GDC conference by Cap Capsation, Capsian, I keep hearing it pronounced different things, but regardless, at that conference, they showed that Vega was going to be the follow-up to Polaris, which is, you know, great and all, but that was going to be the card which supposedly debuted HPM2. This logically means that we won't see Polaris with HPM2, rather obviously, and so that means that they're either going to stick with HPM1 or GDDR5. Now, that also means that the previous limit of 4 gigabytes of HBM1 is going to become a really interesting um, factor. Because let's face it, 4 gigabytes for Polaris may not simply be enough. And we know, of course, the next generation of games are requiring ever bigger textures. And this is particularly true if you start going up in resolutions, for example, up to 4K. Now, I have heard of dual. Um, interposers, dueling interposers from SK Helix, which popped up some point last year, but no real, I guess you could say, 
evidence of that has popped up. There was just some announcements from SK Hoenix last year, and that was it. Supposedly, this did allow them to get past the 4 gigabyte to, I'm assuming, 8 gigabyte, but whether that's really the case, we just don't know. It could be that they weren't able to manufacture it in large quantities. It could be it was way too expensive. Maybe it just didn't really get off of the, uh, I guess you could say, the sketchboard. Or maybe they do have that technology, but they just figured they would kind of sit on it for a while because they thought HPM2 would be further along in development than what it actually turned out to be. And we kind of expected HBM2 to be ready for the release of the cards, which is in June, but that doesn't seem to be the case. And once again, we're going to be looking at Q3 and Q4 for 4GB and 8GB DRAM chips, respectively. Finishing things off, and something I did forget to mention, it would appear from those who have seen Polaris 11 that the PCB actually has GDDR5 chips. Now, we don't know whether they're 5 or 5X. 5X, of course, has considerably higher bandwidth than regular 5, but it makes more sense, in my opinion, at least if it's a lower power chip, to just run on GDDR5 in terms of the bandwidth required, but from what I remember, and I'm going to have to do some checking on this later, but I'm pretty darn sure 5X actually has lower power requirements anyway, so that could be one reason for them to go ahead and utilize the newer specification of memory. Now, jumping on to the Pascal train, and supposedly the GP104 based GTX 1080 and the GP100 based GTX 1080 Ti and the Titan cards have been leaked, supposedly. Now, I'm really skeptical about this one, just because of the nature of the leak, and there's also a couple of suspect specs in this, but I'm going to report it anyway. Um, but, my opinion, massive, massive, massive shaker of salt. Just massive. So, I would probably take this one, if I had to guesstimate on the likelihood, Maybe 2 or 3 out of 10, but I'll go for it anyway. So, first things first, let's go with the naming convention, because this one actually sounds kind of cool. Essentially, the GeForce 1080 would not be called the 1080, it would be called the GeForce X80, and X80 Ti, and finally X80 Titan. And I'm pretty sure you can guess what each of those are, so I don't need to go through them all. In terms of specifications, if you were to take a look at, let's say, the GTX Titan X, which is the current high-end card from um, NVIDIA, it's the very, 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 very top ultra deluxe GPU, and that features 3072 shader cores. Nice round number. The GeForce X80 Titan, however, supposedly features 6144 shader cores, Whereas the TIE 5120 and the X80 4096, the base clock for each of those GPUs is between 1000 and 1025, with the TIE and the Titan uh, having 1025. The really weird thing, however, comes down to memory configurations. I'm going to read out what they are first, and then I'm going to go into why I think that they're baloney. So, essentially, the memory technologies are GDDR5, GDDR5, and then the Titan has HBM2. And, obviously, the bus widths do go up accordingly. So, 384, 512, and then, finally, 4096, with the GDDR5 memory clock at 8000, 8000, and 1000 for HBM2, which means that, in terms of gigabytes per second, you're getting 384, 512, and finally 1024, and has a TDP of 175, or 225, and 225. Now, I've gone through all these specs pretty quickly, because we're going to be going into them in more detail now. So the first thing that makes me absolutely questioning things here is the fact that it's reading to be GDDR5, and not 5X. Now, it's possible that there was an abbreviation, it's possible that it was a typo, but that's kind of weird, I've got to say. Um, and considering other rumours have already put the GP104 
Power GTX 1080 is using GDDR5X. We've had a couple of those. That's just weird. So it's really unlikely that NVIDIA will use 5 rather than 5X. And I tell you why that is, because it just makes sense from power slash performance, because as I mentioned, it requires less power, you've got much higher bandwidth, so you need less chips. And the other thing that kills it for me is that the GPU supposedly, at least for the X80, only has six gigabytes of memory. Other reports from websites such as Benchlife are showing that it's got eight gigabytes. That immediately makes things a bit suspect. What else? Well, another thing which makes me a bit confused is the disparity of memory between the X80 Ti and the X80 Titan. Now, both of those are utilizing the same GPU. They're still using GP100. I'll repeat that one more time, so I screwed up. GP100. They're, of course, on 16nm, and as I've mentioned, disparity in terms of number of shader cores, uh, 5120 compared to 6144. Great. Shiny. All, all great. No issues there. The problem comes for the memory configuration. GDDR5 versus HBM2. Uh, okay. That is just bizarre. Because you would not have two GPUs with completely different memory standards. It just would not happen. It would you just wouldn't have the memory controllers like that. It just it would just take up massive amounts of space and it just it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense, to be honest with you. They're two totally different memory interfaces, so you would either have to build two different memory controllers on the chip, which would be gargantuanly complex and would eat up a lot of space, or you would have to have one or the other. Therefore, you would have to denote that most likely, and one would be called, and I'm just obviously giving an example, GP101 and then GP100. Therefore, don't necessarily make much sense to me. I'm not saying that this isn't maybe slightly in some ways accurate, like for example the number of shader cores, but it seems to me like all someone's done is basically just double things up here. And so it looks a little suspect, that's just my opinion. So I would once again start backing up the salt truck. Unfortunately, we don't know the specifications of Pascal yet. We know a few things. We know that it's going to offer twice the performance per watt over Maxwell, which is great. It's going to offer at least DirectX 12 uh, underscore 1 or higher support. It's built on 16nm. That's been confirmed a dozen times over. Will feature about 17 billion transistors. And supposedly... Um, will have some GPUs which are going to be HBM2. Now, I'm going to guess that those are going to be late in the year because of the HBM2 issues that I mentioned earlier. So it's probable that we're going to see those GPUs purely with, let's say for the sake of argument, the Titan lineup. Or, for example, just the Quadros. We just don't 100% know yet. Um, but from what we've heard, it's likely that the GP100s could potentially have HBM2, but obviously, once again, we're just kind of guessing at the moment, and we're going to have to wait for NVIDIA to finally release the specifications of the card, and they're being a little cagey at the moment, to say the least. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.